Hey everyone, Dan Takashi here. Stock market bubble. Jim Cramer, really famous uh, CNBC guy. He uh, just had a uh, news teleconference a few weeks ago saying this is the biggest bubble he's ever seen. Also, I'm just seeing tons and tons of articles lately talking about how the stock bubble is waiting to burst. Uh, other just news about how uh, people have forgotten the dot-com bubble. Uh, Morgan Stanley's uh, analyst, uh, very famous analyst here, Wilson, saying stocks are overbought. Tons of reports here. And I want to tell you what I think is happening with the market right now. Give you an update. Uh, what is the definition of a bubble? And when does a bubble burst? And look at the charts and tell you my opinion. Are we in a bubble right now? I want to try to analyze this in a five to 10 minute YouTube video. For those of you new to my channel, my name is Dan. I'm a former Wall Street guy, former hedge fund guy. I just started YouTube this year. Would appreciate if you guys subscribe to my channel and press that subscription button below. Also, would appreciate if you guys have enjoyed the content today, smash that like button below. Would appreciate your support. Uh, right now is the time is December 5th, uh, 6.27 p.m. Uh, Japan time, meaning that it is 4.27 a.m. Uh, New York Eastern time. Let's first talk about these articles that have come out. And then let's go over some technical analysis, especially looking at the option space, uh, volatility, etc. And at the very end, I'll give you uh, my opinion on whether this is a bubble or not and what I think is the definition of a bubble. First off, let's go over some of this news that's come out. So this just came out towards the end of November. CNBC Jim Cramer saying Tuesday uh, gains a speculative bubble. There are uh, where there's no profit takers. Uh, you know, he's the, he's the host of Mad Money. Really, really famous guy, right? Uh, talking to the most speculative market I've ever seen. Uh, just you know, these headline type comments. Uh, other sort of uh, analysts, uh, you know, the Amandi CIO here, uh, big uh, you know investment fund. <clears throat> the CIO of also uh, Newberger Berman, uh, Eric Kunz also saying, you know, they had a tech conference basically talking about how uh, most of the conference uh, during this uh, tech conference, people are saying, you know, in Paris, France, and this is that uh, tech shares are way overbought right now. Uh, you know, this, during this global investment outlook summit, uh, basically saying that they're not expecting a 2000 type dot com crash, but they ex expect that the bubble is just a matter of time. It's not if it's when it's not when it's you know, it's not if it's when. Uh, also, just more and more and more. There's tons of these articles coming out. It's just nonstop. Uh, Morgan Stanley's Wilson saying stocks are overbought, risk correction, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Basically, what's going on is that a lot of these articles are focusing on really one major point here, and that's this: it's that a lot of the stocks right now that are being powered up are some of these companies with shaky finances. There's a lot of leverage going on, uh, and there's a lot of companies that basically are in a balance sheet recession, as in they're not in a good situation. They have very weak balance sheets, and the weak versus the strong right now are very uh, well, they're doing very well right now. And you can see this by uh, what do I mean by weak companies just by looking at in terms of the numbers of companies with negative EBITDA EBITDA is earnings before interest and taxes and uh, depreciation, uh, annualization, etc. And the amortization, etc. So this comes out to basically your net cash, it's earnings uh, before all of this stuff. And you're seeing here the number of companies just just going up and up and up in the US right now. Uh, and some of these top companies we can see here with huge negative EBITDA for the third quarter of this year. So it just got announced, we can see here, humongous uh, EBITDA is here negative here, American Airlines, United Airlines, Icon, Delta, Norwegian, uh, the We, oh, well, this is the you know We Corp, Carnival, Air Canada, uh, PBF Energy, Live Nation, uh, Park Hotels, Royal Caribbean. A lot of these companies just getting destroyed here. Tons of tons of uh, you know negative EBITDA, including obviously Uber. Uber's always been kind of a negative EBITDA company, but nonetheless. So looking at all this here. Uh, we have to ask ourselves, you know, are we really in a bubble or not? Let's look at the charts. Let's get an update on terms of also volatility to see if uh, we truly are in a bubble or not. And I'll tell you what I think is my measure of uh, what a bubble is. So when I talk about a bubble, I usually look at the U.S. market because the U.S. market, usually most of these articles, they're talking about the U.S. market. And I look at the S&P 500. I don't look at the Dow. I don't look at the Nasdaq because the S&P 500 is the most broad index. It's 500 stocks. The Dow is only 30 stocks. The Nasdaq is only the tech stock. You got to look at the S&P 500. That's 500 stocks in a lot of different broad indices. Now, looking at this S&P 500 right now, looking at the weekly uh, market right now, weekly chart, you know, we are quite far away 
<clears throat> we're about I see here about 16% about 17 uh, about 16 15% away from its 50 weekly moving average so that's a little bit far here I uh, do note that the market's gone up quite a bit and uh, overall you're still seeing MACD's on an upward trend here our size an upward trend and our size also not very high which is I think interesting to note. Uh, you know before the uh, coronavirus crash here we saw our size were quite high it went up to all the way up to 80 so that was a very very high the overvalued market uh, different situation right now I think also RSI and the weekly RSI got to highs 92 in January 2019 uh, so right now it's a very different situation I think it looks very high right now but the momentum and how how high we've gone it's not as fast as it was during uh, let's say January 2020 or January 2018 so first off I think that's a very difficult a different situation the other thing I want to look at is volatility VIX here this is really the bread and butter of fear in the market I think there's so many different fear gauges about you know the yield spread about you know, volume versus this the McLellan indicator blah 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 it comes down to the VIX guys the options market is so much bigger than the stock market it's gigantic and how many people are buying options they're buying insurance it's the best measure of fear in the market how many people are buying insurance and you can see this with the VIX right now it's at 20.8 right now it's not quite down to bubble levels like before coronavirus it was here at 2020 right it's very you know all these other types of crashes that we've seen uh, before the crash it was usually much lower here uh, we see here in September 2018 also January 2018 during the crash here it was much lower it usually starts around 10 or maybe 14 or something like that uh, usually it's in the teens it doesn't start usually from 20 it's possible but it's very rare that we see these one-time shoots up from I think a higher level here also one of my preferred measures that I wrote in my new book is the VIX divided by VIX this measure which is basically volatility of volatility divided by volatility and this usually trades together with the market and it's still not reached back to all time back highs here uh, it still, still hasn't regained the highs of 2019 it still hasn't even regained the highs of 2017 so this actually I think still has a ways to go up here uh, this index has been pretty I think pretty accurate for the most part determining a lot of different moves throughout the last few years and I think this is not at an overvalued range whatsoever just looking at S&P 500 look at the futures in terms of non-commercial positions on the CFTC it's totally normal right now also looking at the asset manager positions it's probably about normal right now looking at the ETF positions right now it's just Tesla but we look at SPY uh, it went all the way back down now it's back to normal around 13.76 so all this right now is showing to me right now that we're not in an extreme bubble we're not in some sort of dangerous uh, you know I think eminent like uh, destruction but uh, what is the sign of a bubble I think that's the crux of this uh, video is how do you actually search for a bubble and I'll tell you what I think is actually the best way to search for a bubble it's a little bit different from other people so what I think actually the best way to search for a bubble is number one you got to look at the charts always charts a picture is worth a thousand words as my father always said it's always more accurate you look at a chart you look at a picture it just says so much more than any amount of words can say and right now the charts are showing overall that VIX is not all the way back down and the S&P 500 although it's high it's not in an exuberance level uh, like I've said before this SP 500 it's not exuberance for this RSI exuberance is usually when we see here when it gets to close to 80 these levels are exuberance these levels you need to I think watch out for and that's when you start to see big movements down here like around stuff like this January 2011 it gets very very high around 80 that I think is dangerous uh, also we see the highs here in May 2007 2007 actually you got to break I think at least above 70 for you for to say that this is some sort of exuberance level and right now we haven't even broke through 70 uh, so I would say that no we're not in an exuberance the other is actually a really uh, big sentiment gauge that I use and uh, I just started using it just a few uh, actually uh, years ago but it's just called the Google trend search you just go on Google trend and type in stock market bubble and you can see how many people over the last few years are looking and typing in stock market bubble and you know what this is a great fear gauge the more people are typing this in all around the world it indicates there's a lot of people thinking that we're in a bubble and if a lot of people think that we're in a bubble it usually means we're not in a bubble bubbles are usually when most people think that there is no bubble that it's just 
things are okay and it's going to keep getting better and better and better. This is not that situation right now because people people are thinking about a bubble. They're getting prepared for a bubble. You can see this here. Uh, it was actually quite high even after coronavirus crash during June, also quite high during August this year, uh, number of searches. And then even right now, it's not all the way back down to normal. It's still a little bit high here right now. Uh, even at this point right now, it's higher than it was, let's say, uh, let's say, you know, uh, before the elections, etc., or before coronavirus, etc. These points right here are times when uh, either the market has crashed or uh, people have just been fearing the market. And it actually, they've actually been great buying opportunities, uh, most of these points when it gets higher. So I would suggest also looking at Google Trends and just seeing how is the overall internet? How are people thinking about this? Because the market, remember, it's people's minds, it's emotions. It's not just about valuations. It's not just about numbers. It's about how people feel and people act based on their emotions, fear and greed. Right now, there's not a lot of greed in this market. Uh, it's not a lot of fear either, but it's not a lot of greed. So I wouldn't say this is a bubble. I wouldn't say this is going to burst. For overall recommendations is to ignore this stuff. Continue to invest long term. Continue to invest in a portfolio every single month for your retirement and try to ignore this type of news because right now, things aren't looking that way. Thanks guys for watching my video. Hopefully you enjoyed the content. If you did, please press the like button below and please subscribe to my channel going forward. Thanks and have a great night. Have a great weekend.